Greetings everyone! My name is Leia and welcome to the Control Art Modeling series. In the previous videos we've completely finished the boy's body. Thank you for sticking with me for so long. In this video we're going to prepare the model for texturing. We need to prepare UV layouts and set up the materials. I'm working in the program Autodesk Maya 2019 but using older versions shouldn't give you too much trouble. You can find and download all of the resources of this lesson in the link in the description. Let's continue our modeling. Before we start drawing or making textures for the boy, we need to unwrap the model. UEs are two-dimensional presentations of the 3D model. The model is very simple, so we will create only two materials, one for his entire body and another for his eyes. Before we start unwrapping the model, we have to be sure about two things, the scale ratios and 3D Unfold plugin. I'll skip into the future for a bit. Ooh. For 3D Unfold plugin, go to Windows, then go to Settings Preferences and select Plugin Manager. Type 3D into the search bar and we should find the Unfold 3D.mll plugin. Be sure to mark squares at Loaded and Auto Load. Press Refresh and exit the manager. This plugin helps you to create better UV shells. And back to the present. Ooh. We want to have all objects on scale 1 because Maya's function called Layout can calculate how big UV shells have to be in comparison to one another. That's why I've told you to freeze everything to scale 1. Also, while we will be doing this, rotate all the shells to be either horizontal or vertical because layout can also rotate the shells during the calculation. Have everything on scale 1 and rotate everything to be as straight as possible. When you've checked the model, go to UV and select UV Editor. I'll push the UV Toolkit window into the UV Editor and I'll place the UV Editor to the view panel. If you have two monitors, you can just have the UV editor open on the second one. I'll close down the outliner so we have more space. When we select the model, we should see its UVs on the right side and boy oh boy, they are a mess. You can see that as I go past the shells in the UV editor with the mouse, the boy's mesh reacts. For those who have never worked with UV editor before, let me give you a quick rundown at least for the functions that we will be using. In the UV Toolkit, you can select vertices, edges, faces, UVs or UV shells. In Cut and Sew, we have, well, Cut and Sew options. Very self-explanatory, I think. And in Unfold, we will be using Unfold, which spreads the UV shells out. Straighten UVs is great if you have strips that you want to paint on, for example, shoelaces or even certain parts of clothes. In the right window, you insert the maximum angle used for straightening the UVs. And the straightened shell tries to straighten the UV shell around the selected edge loop. We will mostly use cut, sew and unfold. You can ignore other functions for the time being. Select all of the shells with left click and select sew. Why did we sew all of this together? because we will create our own cuts into the model. First, create the general UV shells and then go into details. Enable symmetry in UV toolkit and let's start. I'll start with the legs. Select edge loop where boy socks meet the skin and in the UV toolkit, select cut. I'll separate legs where they meet with the pants and use cut again. Cut the inside of the pants from the outer part and create a cut where socks meet the shoe. Click on UV shell selection and select socks. Just like with the meshes and objects, you can also isolate the shells or parts of it by clicking the isolate selected button or pressing Ctrl plus 1. Isolate socks and unfold them. Turn off the symmetry and let's move the shells apart. Now, these shells are circular because there is no vertical cut to spread it out. When it comes to clothes, I recommend you make cuts where the clothes are sewn together. So yeah, you do become a digital mistress for a time. Enable the symmetry back on again and select edges at the back of the sock. Press cut, select shells and unfold them. 
Follow the same vertical cut down to the shoe. Select the edges and cut them. Unfold the shoes and place them apart. To get a better shape, cut away the shoe sole from the shoe itself. Select the edges and cut them. Do the same to the other one. Select all of the shells and unfold them. The shoe shell is okay, but it can be better. Separate the tongue away from the shoe and unfold it. If you enable the checker map, it shows you how the texture would be displayed on the model. If the checkers are nicely square, then the texture won't be stretched. But you can see the checkers are seriously stretched at the top of the tongue. We can solve this by making additional cuts. Separate the back of the tongue, select edges and cut them. Select the shells and unfold them. Before, the checkers were stretched, but after unfolding, much better. The front of the shoe is slightly stretched, so let's cut the shoe in the middle and unfold it. Great! We have unwrapped the shoes and the socks, so let's go to the legs. Make a cut into the legs as we did into the socks and unfold them. Create a cut where pants meet the jacket. Select the outer pants shell and unfold it. Do the same with the inner pants part. We need to put vertical cuts into them to spread out these circles. Double click on the edge loop that goes through the middle of the crotch area and select edges inside the pants. Cut there. If we enable the checker map, you can see how stretched out the shells are. But if we unfold them, bam, look how nice they are now. I'll create another cut through the crotch and I'll move these shells away. At the jacket, make a cut at the edge to separate the inner and the outer part. Then cut away the pockets like this. Unfold it, rotate them and push the shell away. Cut the sleeves in two. Select the sleeve and unfold it. We still need to cut away the hand from the sleeve, so make cuts to spread out the circle shells into nice square shells. Because if we zoom in, we can see the hands are extra itsy bitsy tiny. Go inside the sleeve and cut the hand away. You can see how badly the shells have been unfolded. Unfold hands and scale them up if your hands are as tiny as mine. I'll move the shells together. Cut at the edge to separate the inner and outer part of the sleeve. Create a horizontal cut on the top. If you don't have an edge to make a straight cut, it's not a problem. Just go around a bit and unfold them. I'll move them out of the way. Let's make a cut into the neck. Isolate it so it will be easier for us to cut it apart. Separate the color from the jacket, then the shirt. I'll unfold everything to see what we've done. We need to have some extra cuts at the color tips so they unfold nicer. You can see with the checkers map how it is. Cut across the middle. Hmm, could be better. Make more cuts at the bottom of the edge and unfold it. I'll move the shells away. Unfold the jacket and see what else we should cut. Cut the jacket in the middle and at the shoulder. Make cuts into the inner part of the jacket. Unfold it and move it away. Oh, whoops! We forgot to unwrap the hand. Zoom closer to it and isolate it. Now I'll make a cut that separates the upper part of the hand from the palm. Select the edges and cut them. Hmm, how to cut the thumb? We can go around like this and it should be okay. If we turn on the checker map, we can see how they're stretched at fingertips. Let's create extra cuts to the fingertips so the hands unfold better. Unfold the hands again. You can see the fingertips are much better. Rotate the shells and move them away. We almost unwrapped the entire model. Isolate the head and make a cut to the inside of the lips. We want to separate the mouth pouch from the face. Unfold the mouth and isolate it. We need to cut it some more. Make cuts to the side of the mouth, like this, and unfold it. Oh, it's still joined together there. Cut it and there. Separate the hair from the head. 
follow the hairline around the model and make cuts. The forehead might be a bit annoying to cut, but nothing too big. Let's unfold everything. Oh boy, his face looks a bit frightening to be quite honest. I'll isolate the head and make a cut at the back. Unfold it. Separate the neck from the head. Looks better, but the air needs fixes. What I'll do is cut the air away from the head. Do the same on the other side. Unfold each time you make a new shell. The nose area is still stretched. Maybe a cut into the chin will help out. I'll move the ears away. You can see the checkers are still very stretched at the ears. I'll cut out the inside part of the ear. Better. I'll cut at the top of the ear. Maybe this will help. Mm, this looks much better. I'll make another cut at the bottom and do the same on the other side. Move the ear shells away and head too. Select the hair and unfold them. Separate the top part of the hair from the sides and unfold them. With the checkers you can see hair banks are still stretched. Make cuts behind the banks so that the cuts are hidden from the view. Do this on all of them. Unfold them again and do the same with the eyebrows. Oh, <laughs> there's a cut on the face. <laughs> Clumsy me. We will sew it at the end, but for now, let's finish the inside of the mouth. Select the teeth and tongue and isolate them all. Unfold the upper teeth. We want the teeth to be as straight of a strip as possible. Select all of the faces of the teeth, go to UV and select automatic. Select all the shells, sew them together and unfold it. Select the middle edge loop of the teeth, make a cut and unfold the shells. I'll move them away. Do the same with the lower teeth. And at last, the tongue. Unfold the tongue. Eh, doesn't look great. Sew it together and let's make our own cuts. Cut at the bottom of it and at the back side. Unfold it again and yeah, looks great. Rotate the shells and I'll sew the back of the tongue together. Then I'll move it away. We need to fix the extras, the tie, the buttons and the shoelaces. As you can see, the buttons are connected through UVs as well because we used the duplicate special. Select one button and unfold the shell. There are some odd cuts, usually you get a nice circle. So sew it back together and unfold it again. Let's fix the tie. Sew everything together first, isolate it and let's make our own cuts at the back. Double left click the middle edge loop, select straighten shell and unfold it again. Move it away. Unfold shoelaces too and rotate them. Use straighten UVs for this and set it on 30 degrees. Ok, and now the eyes. The UV shell that we got by default is bad because they need to be circular and in the middle of the UV map. Select the eye shell and use sew, then unfold it. Then select the UV shell, snap its pivot point to the middle of the eye, then hold X and snap the shell to the middle of the UV map. We unwrapped everything. I'll just fix this cut on the boy's head and this is it. Now let's use the layout function that I was mentioning before. You can see that some shells are huge in comparison to others when they shouldn't be. You can see how the checkers are of different sizes, but we want them to be all the same. You can see this at the pocket and the jacket. Before we do any layout, let's make sure that shells are either horizontally or vertically oriented. I'll speed through this. Select the entire model minus the eyes, go to Modify in UV Editor window and open the options of the layout. First, reset settings so we all have the same options. At the method, use Unfold 3D. This is the plugin we enabled. Then, go to Packing Resolution. You can either use the slider or manually type in the number. I'll set it on 4K, but you can make it smaller if you wish. 
Higher the number, higher the resolution of the texture. Packing iterations means how many rounds the Maya will take to calculate everything. I use layout to first calculate the scales of the UV shells, so set it on 1. Make sure the shell prescaling is set on preserve 3D ratios. Leave shell pre-rotation to off, then mark the rotate shells. During the layout calculating, Maya will rotate shells for 90 degrees and for one circle. It will rotate each shell four times maximum. You can set the degree to any other number, but remember, lower the number, the longer it will take to calculate. At texture map size, you can pick the same size as you've put under the packing resolution. Under padding units, you should select pixels. During the recording, I forgot to set the numbers in the shell padding and tile padding. Shell padding will set the distance between UV shells. You want to have distance. I would say 3 is the minimum. I usually work with 6, 8 or 12. Tile padding means how far away the shells will be placed from the edges of the UV map area. I usually set it to be half of the shell padding, so if I set shell padding to 8, the tile padding is 4. You can leave the other settings as they are and press Layout UVs. Maya will take some time to calculate and... there. We have everything set. You can see that the checkers map looks even on the entire body. If you want to draw details on some parts, you can make their shells bigger, for example buttons, but do mind that you're not scaling them up too much. Or if there are parts that are almost never visible, such as inside of his pants, you can make their shells much smaller. While everything was nicely calculated, the UV map is not optimally used up. You can see there is a lot of empty space at the top. Oh, now it's the fun part. Scaling the UVs, rotating them and moving them around the UV map. I'll fast forward to this part because this process does take time to do. Or if you're feeling lazy, you can use the layout function again. But I prefer to scale up and down manually and then adjust the shells. You can pretend that you're playing Tetris. This is how my UVs look in the end. I'm quite happy with them. If you have some unused spaces between the shells, it's okay. Practice makes it perfect. We only have to move the eye shells. And there we have it. We completely unwrapped the model. We only need to set up the materials and the model will be ready for texturing. Let's open the Hypershade. You can find its icon in the status line or you can find it in Windows, Rendering Editors. Lambert 1 is the default material on any object we create inside the Maya, but we want to set our own materials. We are running out of space, so I'll move out the UV editor and place in the Hypershade. I'll also bring back the Outliner. You can create material by selecting an object and applying it to it, or you can create material in the Hypershade. The latter way will only create material but not apply it to anything. First, name the remaining objects and drag them inside the group. Separate the groups by the material into body mat and eye mat groups. Mat stands for material. If we open the UV editor, you can see these two groups have their own UV maps. Eye has its own UV space and body has its own UV space as it should be. Create a fong material in the hypershade and name it Boy Body Mat. You can pick whatever color you wish. Select the Boy Mat group, then hold right click in the view panel. Go to Assign Existing Material and select Boy Body Mat. Now we've assigned the material to it. We can also first select object and assign material to it, for example, select eyes, then hold right click, and this time go to assign favorite material and select fong. Rename the material to boy eye matte and pick a color. I'll change both materials to bright pink. Why? Because we need to create new materials for duplicates if you will put the model inside the Substance Painter. Because when you do baking inside Substance Painter, you want it to make bakes according to the one original model without including the duplicates. 
Any meshes that share the same UV space or that their shells overlap should have their own material. We will add dup as for duplicate to these materials. Check that the duplicates are now in separate instances. So select the duplicates, go to modify, convert and select instance to object. When you do this, the objects are not connected anymore. So select the right eye, hold right click, give it new funk material and name it boy eye dup mat. If you're not sure which part of the model are the duplicates, open the UV editor and click on the shaded option. This allows you to see which shells are overlapped or reversed. All shells that are tinged purple have the duplicates. I've made changes to the model off screen. On my side, the shoelaces and buttons aren't duplicated anymore, but for you, they still should be. But on my screen, it's the leg and sock that are now duplicates. Select the duplicated meshes or objects and give them a new funk material. This time, name it boy body dup mat. If you've created more materials than necessary, you can delete them out by holding right click in the materials window, go to edit and delete unused nodes. Lambert 1, Particle Cloud 1 and Shader Glow 1 are undeletable materials so don't worry about them. There we go, we've set up the materials. Let's do some final polish to the model. I'll clean up the outliner a bit. Meshes are nicely named. I'll delete the history. I'll remove, well, delete the layers that were created when I accidentally copied the meshes. So right click on the layers and delete them. Select the model and go to Mesh Display and click Set to Face, then Softed Edge. Save the file and that's that. This is it! The model is now properly prepared to be exported and placed into the Substance Painter for texturing. Thank you so much for sticking with me for so long and I hope you've learned a lot from the episodes. If you've liked the series, please share it with your friends. Feel free to check out our YouTube channel for other guides. We have quite a few. Follow us on social media to see what we're up to. And until next time, I wish you all happy modeling.